All right, battery, you're going. All right, so basically what I want to do is just talk about a few general points I observed about the papers that I wanted to highlight before you all do paper two. Granted, ideally, I have given you your papers back when I give this, but this is getting recorded. So if what I say right now uh, you want to see again after I give it to you now, I will be posting it online and we will be able, you can watch it again. But basically, the main things I wanted to say about uh, the papers. Um, first off, uh, theses on the whole, very good. Like everyone generally did a very good job saying this was my thesis and this is what I'll be arguing. Um, now, don't get too excited is that you, one, don't hurt yourself uh, because that would be painful. But yeah, generally, like, people did a very good job of saying, this is what I'll be arguing. Now, the, the details came and went. On the whole, though, I was very happy with the papers that I've graded so far. Um, solid. You all did a nice job laying out the cases, saying your reasons. Um, things, though, that I wanted to highlight is that... Uh, one thing I found myself saying over and over again, which I think is a sign that I didn't teach it well enough, is um, I found myself saying more concrete details. So what do I mean by more concrete details? Give me more supporting details. Yeah, so yeah. Uh, give me more specific descriptions. So uh, I, I sat on the train combing around in the deep, dark, weird corners of my brain about uh, how to illustrate this point. And basically, uh, the goal in a paper is not just to say something that's true. It's to say what's true in the way that is going to make your point clearest. So imagine if your friend says, like, I'm thinking about robbing a bank this afternoon. And you're trying to convince your friend, no, don't rob a bank. You could say, no, oh, you probably shouldn't do that because you'll get in trouble. Like, okay, that is true. If they rob a bank, they will probably get in trouble. However, that's not going to be the most persuasive way of making your point. What might you want to say to them to convince them that, no, they really shouldn't do it? You're not just going to stop with, you might get in trouble. It's going to go to your criminal record, yeah. and then you'll be sentenced to life. Yeah, so what you're going to say is, it's going to go on your criminal record, and you are probably going to go to jail. Um, as long as you get, don't get, first off, you're going to say, the odds that you get caught are about 98%. The odds are, if it's 98%, you're going to get, uh, going to get caught. And if you get caught, you're not just going to, like, be able to go, like, oops. It's going to go on your criminal record. And it's not coming off because this is a felony. And let's be clear, if that is never going to come off, you will never be able to vote again. Um, in the United States, if you're a felon, you're not allowed to vote. So if you, yeah. So that's one thing. And then uh, we have hands here. Who wants to go first? Bro, you want to go first? Oh, sure. So I was going to be like, well, if it, if it was like, if I was going to face my friend, be like, no, you're not going to go rob a bank. What you're going to do is you're going to try to rob the bank. Then the cops are going to get called. Then you're going to get arrested. And then you just keep going. Yeah, and in fact, <laughs> the more detail you give, the more. So your friend is going to be like, oh, yeah, I'll get in trouble. Whatever. What's trouble? I, I can't. They're going to give me a slap on the wrist. But if you go something like, Dude, you can't even tie your fucking shoe. Like, how do you think you're going to rob a bank? Let's talk about how complicated this is. Then, once you get in there, there's going to be cameras everywhere. So you better have a good mask and an escape car. You don't even know anyone who can drive. I have a master plan. How are you going to get out of here? I have a master plan. Then, right, after you explain all that, then you have to explain, like, what's the work of robbing this thing, like, like, if you're going to try to rob Santander or something like that, you might not even have that much money. Yeah, here's the other issue. Yeah. If, you know, robbing a bank is not, like, it, physically Our walking in and so robbing a bank these days is not a smart way of doing it. You might get shot or, like, like shot, shot. Like. Yeah, like, here's another thing. You know what they often, who do they call when you rob this bank? The cops. You know what cops are armed with? Big guns. And, like, big, what? Big guns. and there's going to be a SWAT team. And if you even did get this money, what are you going to use it on without getting caught? Like they so you lay out the complicated details. And then if you really want to convince them, which I'm not going to do because it's not PG enough Rob to put on YouTube, Dashie. you then describe what's going to happen to them in prison. And once you describe what life is like in prison, very quickly, this person's going to change their mind. So what is the point of this? Think about it in your papers. In a lot of cases, people would say, like, a lot of papers would say things like, the information might get hacked and your identity might get stolen. True. But that's not nearly as persuasive as if you follow that up with, for instance, they might get a hold of 
I was, I just had a thought in mind. Um, yeah. Since we're talking about like cyber crime and everything, what if your friend then not like physically robbing a bank? But like so yeah, so this would be one, another true. thing you could that's say to your friend true. is, and this is exactly the sort of things in the paper. You could say things like, now if, <laughs> if you're really set on robbing a bank, it's much better to do it electronically these days. Let me explain to you how to crack the Santander firewall, because we know they're not the best bank and their firewall is not the best. So, um, I actually have no idea. They might have the best firewall imaginable. Like, just, that I might just, be why. I, I just know they're a small bank. Yeah. Small yeah. Um, chain. I know that's yeah. bank. Or, um, so these are, so you might want to, and so the more detail you can provide on these sorts of things, the more persuasive it's going to be. So in the case of like, what your, like, your information might get hacked and your identity might get stolen. Um, and then, like, another common thing is people tend to go, imagine how bad that might be, or imagine what they can do with all that data. True, I can imagine it, but it's more persuasive if you tell me this is what they can do. For instance, you can say something like, for instance, if they have the data of what uh, stops you get off of every day at certain times, they know within a certain radius where you live and presumably where you work. And so, like, with that information, any stalker who wanted to follow you could do it. So these are the sorts of things which are more persuasive than just saying like identity theft. Or like, if they have your social security card and your bank account, it's very easy to set up a money order to say, I don't actually know if that's true. But you, these are the sorts of things, the more concrete detail. Or um, like in the, uh, let's see, what other, what were the other two prompts? Um, in the North Korea one, you might say something like, and uh, if you invade North Korea, p innocence will suffer. True, innocence will suffer. But you can describe things in more detail. Like, for instance, the moment it seemed we might attack North Korea, Kim Jong-un would almost certainly launch a nuclear weapon towards the West Coast. Uh, eyewitness accounts from the Hiroshima bombings in 1945 suggest that in a nuclear bomb, people's eyes melt out of their heads, uh, which is true. People's eyes melt out of their heads. To avoid this degree of innocent suffering, we shouldn't invade North Korea. Like that sort of concrete detail makes it much more persuasive. So the more detail you give on an example, the better. Now you don't need to go overboard. Like in this case, like if you're actually convincing your friend not to rob a bank, you want all the detail imaginable. It's about finding the sweet spot of proving to me what you mean, explaining it clearly, and then like showing me it's not just generally, it's not just identity theft. Here's why this is a big deal. If I can like look at it and be like, oh yeah, I really don't want to be identity thieved, then you've done it right. If I'm just like, oh yeah, identity theft, you're right, that's true. It's not as persuasive. Um, so this is what the what really separates like the best papers from the good papers is this level of concrete detail. Um, two. And the level of dissection. Yeah, and so yeah, um, another thing I found is like define. This, on the whole, people were better this uh, term than other terms in terms of defining their terms, but it always helps to define. So if you're going to say something like, uh, for instance, um, there's going to be a problem because they're going to data mine. Like, okay, explain to me, show to me that you know what data mining is. So the best way to do this, just like as a formula, you just start with... Um, if, so take your sentence and they have to data mine comma the definition. Yeah, so that's one very clear way. You just say data mining, which is, and then you give a definition. And also, to show that you really understand it, like that is good. Like if you include that, you're probably in the very good section. If you want to move into the absolutely excellent section, you then prove to me that you understand it by giving me an example. So you say for data mining, which is the looking at large computer algorithms to find whatever. For instance, Amazon looks at our past search histories gathers data about the things we bought and uses that to make suggestions about what we're likely to buy in the future. That sort of thing is, like that really shows me you understand it. And now I, even if I have a slight fever and have read 60 papers, will be able to know that you know exactly what it is you're talking about. Um, lastly, my favorite word. I always end up writing this a lot. Uh, what were signposts? Where do they come? Transition. Yeah, they, there's a first sentence in a paragraph, generally. And their point is they are what allows the paper to transition neatly from one paragraph to the next to the next. Apparently. And the, yeah, but, and, and so one thing, though, with signposts is, and this is where philosophy papers feel a little less natural than other papers, 
it's not just a matter of saying, uh, like the best signposts are ones in which it's not just like, uh, I'm trying to think of a good way. Uh, a basic signpost is uh, something like, next we'll talk about this. Well, the most basic is something like, so, or next, or however. So that's a basic line. The next, like, you can think about it in, like, tiers. So a, a non-existent signpost just starts a sentence with something like, data mining is the practice of yada yada. That's not having a signpost, and that takes the, remember, the goal is to guide me, the reader, to follow along as cleanly as possible. So. The level zero is nothing. <coughs> level one is uh, something like. Uh, this isn't, I say. Uh, I'm trying to think of. Oh, okay. like, is, is I'm, tra is I'm trying to think of like the most generic because that's almost bordering on number two. So number one is just something like um, another thing. Level two is something. the next oh. thing to talk about is, and then does anyone know what n number three is? It starts the same way as number two. It just continues after the dot, dot, dot with, the next thing we'll talk about is, so the next thing to talk about is blank because this will show blank. Right. So that's the best papers were ones where when you, so one would say something like nothing, we just jump into data mining. The next one would be like another thing to talk about is data mining. Um, where I guess one, the line between one and two is kind of blurry um, because, there, or uh, I guess a really short one would be something just like, uh, now let's define data mining or something something along these lines, um, where the, it's blurry between, one is kind of a messy term, but the next one is, the next thing to talk about is data mining. Now, this really helps me understand what's coming next in the paragraph. It allows me to understand and know what you're going to talk about, and it helps you guide it. But what it doesn't do is show me how you're thinking about it fitting into your paper. And the goal is to make one big paper where all the parts fit together neatly. So if you can tell me, like, the next thing to talk about is data mining, because this will allow us to see just how at risk uh, your privacy is with yada yada. Or the next thing to consider is data mining to show how much the presence of MPI will threaten individual power. Or the next, so anything like that, or the next thing to talk about is the fact that MTI is actually a system which would bring a lot of benefit, or like a good amount of economic benefit to the city, because this will allow us to see it's not all negatives or something like that. So, so that's what I'm talking about with signposts, is this, this way of taking what you're saying, showing me what you're saying, and tying it in with everything else. And those, and to be clear, like if you didn't have this, there's still a chance you had a very good paper. If you didn't have this, still a chance you had a pretty good paper. Didn't have this, you probably still had an okay paper. Had this, where it's gonna be hard for me to follow. And the other main thing is very often lack of signposts carries with it the fourth thing I wanna say, which is jumping around. So, the best papers are ones that focus on one thing at a time, finish it, and then move on. So you say everything you wanna say about data mining, then you move on. You say One everything you want to say about security, and then you move on. What the the thing that signposts of any sort help with is to allow you to recognize, like I stay focused. All I'm talking about right now is data mining. Don't talk about anything else. That's what my topic sentence says. That's what my signpost says. The messy ones it ends up with a you jump right in. And you say data mining is yada yada. Also, there's a security concern. Once target data mined me. And just like jumping around like that, it gets very hard for me to follow along with. So that's the reason why a lack of sign, you can get by with no signposts, but it's very rare that um, a paper has no signposts and things tie in together nicely. So that's the reason why signposts are so helpful. They help you keep your paper organized. Udi, last word. I was thinking of, uh, if I were you, I would think of the hamburger method, like the bread, like the top bread or the top bun will be the introduction, 
the lettuce and the condiments will be that topic paragraph or the first body paragraph that you want to talk about topic wise and then the meat is the second topic that you want to talk about paragraph wise and then so that is a good way of, yeah. of thinking about it. now one thing that it doesn't work perfectly with philosophy and the reason I haven't talked about the, the hamburger before is sometimes papers don't like it is possible yeah. to uh, split the lettuce into a couple paragraphs and you sometimes have topics like the line between data mining and security are basically blurry and how you define what goes into <coughs> your security paragraph and what goes into your data mining paragraph so the issue is with some of these topics um, if you try to do your lettuce and then your uh, your meat, the problem is that sometimes what you're talking about is a veggie burger, and so your lettuce and your meat are the same thing, and it gets really tough to, to break it apart. So that's the reason why the hamburger method can be useful, but sometimes uh, you're going to be talking about things that don't neatly divide, and you kind of have to force yourself to talk about different parts of the veggie patty and different ones. I have to force myself to eat a veggie burger. Yeah. Um, some of them aren't that bad. Um, some of them aren't that bad. They also make vegetarian sausages now, which are actually really good, but um, probably not as good as like the real thing, but less likely to uh, like contain random stuff. But they do taste good too. But again, I feel like if you t make anything spicy Italian, like it's going to taste like a spicy Italian sausage. You can mix it with dirt and just put the right <laughs> spices in. I bet it would taste like a spicy Italian sausage. All right, any last questions on this stuff? Those were the main things I just wanted to highlight. Um, because these were the, the things I found myself writing the most. Um, but on the whole, things are the papers are looking solid.